So, does this not look cozy? <laughs> I think it does. I this I I showed this in a haul a couple months back. And I use this all the time, but I will tell you the one thing I do not do with this is drink out of it. <laughs> I'm serious. I have a, a, several of these oversized mugs and I have cereal in them, I have soup in them, ice cream in them. I currently have some chilled fruit in here. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that rude? <laughs> anyway, I just recorded my wrap up video. And so this is the review video. And so um, I do both of those every month. Well, <laughs> you guys know me, it's not really every month, but <laughs> the idea is to do them every month so that I can have a short form video for people who just want quick content and something a little longer for people who want something a little longer. And so um, I am going to be doing um, the reviews of the books that I read in October, but I'm also going to do a bonus review and I'll explain while I start doing the reviews. So let me go ahead and get my screen shared here. Um, la, 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 la. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start with Voice of the Just, Blue Sapphire Story. This is book three in the True Colors series. I enjoyed the first two books. I already have the fourth one. I just checked my Kindle. So let's get into the review. <clears throat> this is the third book I've read in this series, and I've already acquired the next one to continue the series. I like the other, like the others, I enjoyed this book. Plus, we finally get to see the ghostly villain. Scroll going on here. The story picks up where the last one left off and continues to intermingle present and past, mystery and paranormal, along with the buds of romance. We now have three jewels, three women, and three ghosts on the right path and a pretty good idea of who and what to look for in the next book. It was fun to see Terry in legal action. So in this book, it focuses on a character named Terry who's a lawyer. Um, if you live in coastal Virginia, AKA Hampton Roads, you too may enjoy this book. I enjoyed many of the local references. I do think it's a bit of nostalgia if that's the right word. But um, being able to read a book that takes place kind of, you know, in your hometown is pretty cool. Highly recommend it to fans of historical mystery, sweet love stories, paranormal encounters, and colonial and revolutionary American history. Now, I do like historical fiction. I'm not a big fan of um, the American Revolution or um, colonial periods, but that's for somewhat obvious reasons. However, um, I do appreciate the, histor the historical factors that are in this story. Um, yeah, so that's one thing that I read. Here's something else that I read, Nexus. So this is an author I discovered through um, the Insecure Writer Support Group. Um, I talk about them all the time, the IWSG, and she's a wonderful um, blogger and author. I read the first book, this is the second one. Actual rating, 4.5. Let me get my scroll thing going here. Um, this one was a slow build. I was worried that it would be all political intrigue, which isn't bad, but I'd hoped for some of the action I experienced in the first book. I was not disappointed. This book really helps readers get a better understanding of what the Riotana really is meant to be and the journey Amaya takes to accept the role and all that's happened in search of her. Um, I like that it appears that more earthlings will be brought into the story. It gives a real purpose to the, to the hero of the story coming from Earth. I often wonder in these, um, in stories like this, why Earth is even involved when other planets and beings always seem more advanced and evolved. I mean, seriously, if you read or watch anything sci-fi related, 
and these creatures come to earth you like why do they even bother coming to earth you know granted <laughs> as readers we have to be able to um connect to the story so we bring these beings to earth but i mean if aliens are really out there they're probably going to stay as far away from earth as possible but i digress let's get back to the review um the dynamic between Amaya and her mother gives another layer to the story I hadn't expected. This story depicts um, family relationships in many different ways, and I appreciate that. We can't choose the family and people we are born related to. Um, when the action finally gets going, it's very intense. I like seeing Amaya use her power with greater control, but I also enjoyed seeing her fight along others, taking her leadership. The planet slash tree thing is awesome. Trying not to say too much and give something away. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I like to say the slow build is, um, I'd say the slow build is the main reason this isn't a true five star read for me, but I still really enjoyed this book. I look forward to more from this series. Highly recommended to fans of YA sci fi and space operas. So, yeah, no major complaints here. It's just that I was hoping that it would start out with more action, but um, it doesn't take long to really get into it. And once it gets into it, it's totally worth it. All right, next book on the list. This is one of the IWSG book club reads for the month of October. We always do two. Uh, I am the admin of that group. So I try to read both books every month. Now that's not to say a month won't come along where I only read one of them. But as the admin, I do try to, you know, help, you know, spread the word about these books. So I read this one and now I'm going to review it. This one is Already Home, a McGuire's Corner novel. This is the first book in the series. Actual rating 3.75. I really enjoyed this book, but I was under the impression that this would be a contemporary romance, but soon discovered this to be a romantic suspense which I very much like. Right away, I'd say the main reason why I had trouble really falling in love with this book, hoping to read more of the series and fall in love with those, is that I didn't care for the main female character. I really wanted, oops, <laughs> I really wanted to like Maggie McGuire. By the end of the book, I didn't dislike her as much as I had earlier on. I felt like she was supposed to be this strong, independent woman who's feisty and known as the town's sweetheart, but she kept presenting herself as a, dance, as a damsel just waiting to be in distress. She consistently did outrageous things to put herself and others in danger throughout the story. Only at the very end did she kind of start to make better decisions. I think if she had spent one night in jail, it would have made her a more likable character without her being attached to Chief Monroe. But by the end, you have to care about Maggie if you care about the relationship she has with Jack. Now let's talk about Jack. Aside from his odd taste in women, I like this man. He's a good character. I like that he's smart and reasonable. Um, his backstory is sad as many leading men are in this kind of book, but I like how this character is dealing with it. It's one thing to read about a character battling alcoholism and reading about one who chooses not to go down that path. I also really enjoyed reading about the small town of McGuire's Corner. I like reading about small towns. I really do. It's just the thing for me. I don't know. Maybe it started with Superman and Smallville. Who knows? Um, um, I'd never want to live in one of these towns, but I'd love to visit them. The McGuire family seems like they have a lot going on and I'm hoping to get to know more about them from the other books in the series. I already got book two. The steam level is pretty high in this book. Definitely not a family read, but all very tasteful. With what kids can see on TV these days, I'll let parents decide if their teen is mature enough for this. So mm. recommended to adult fans of romantic suspense and mild crime drama. Yeah, I enjoyed this book. I mean, Literally, I think if I had just liked the heroine more, I, that rating would have been like doubled or something. I don't, you know, I'm not going to do math right now, but <laughs> I really did like the book. I just kept getting so frustrated at the, at the main female character, but I already have book two and I'm excited. 
All right, so here is your bonus review. So this is the other IWSG book club read for the month of October. Um, I read this book when it came out a few years ago. I've actually read it several times um, because I just really like it. <laughs> it's a standalone, um, which this this author has written another sci-fi series that I really like, but it's it's a series. And so this one is a standalone. He did release one kind of little follow-up story for some of his fans, which I cherish, but this is it. So I'm gonna just share this with you because it was, like I said, one of my book club reads for the month. So this is Dragon of the Stars um, by Alex J. Kavanaugh. It says, every time I read of Kavanaugh's books, I kick myself for waiting so long to read it. This isn't just another space opera. This is an amazing space opera by an author who's known for adding layers you didn't expect in such a story. While I will always love the Casa series, that's his other books, um, Dragon of the Stars blow me away. I almost want to write fan fiction about this story. I'm actually sad that this is a standalone, but I get why it might be difficult to continue the story. When I first started, oh, what did I do, people? Hold on just a second. <laughs> when I first started reading about Aiden and his desire to be captain of his own ship, I didn't really much care for him. Um, I did like his parents though. <laughs> the whole disagreement between Hyrath, um, Aiden's home planet, and the rest of the Alliance initially seemed as trivial as most political conflicts, but it soon began to develop into, began to develop in a way that let you know more was happening, even if you didn't know what. Um, I see most plot twists coming a mile away. And even though, let me move some things around. I, even though I kind of saw this one coming, I wasn't expecting the finality of it. I guess I kept thinking that there was a back door or an ace in the hole to be played after the ultimate sacrifice was made, but nope. Um, <laughs> it really was the ultimate sacrifice. Like, I mean, forever. Uh, like all of Kavanaugh's book, this story has layers. Most of the people never get the opportunity to take on a true leadership role and might take for granted what all it actually takes um, to be not just an effective leader, but a great one whose followers would gladly go to their death under such leadership. This story shows what a sacrifice leadership and heroism really is and so much more. I finished the book feeling as though I was connected to the characters and the world in which they lived. I wanted to bring all the, I'm not even gonna pr pronounce this right, um, car grandies, car, car grandies, I know I'm not saying that right, <laughs> home and let them eat my backyard. Um, don't even get me started on um, Pavat. I think that's how you say that, Pavat. It's a female character, that's her last name, Pavat. Anyway, so, um, I so want to be besties with her. Um, I seriously need the following installments to be added to this amazing standalone. Pava's backstory, prequel, a history of high wrath dragons, side story, the life cycle of a car grandees told in a creative narrative, one awesome diplomatic mission in the life and times of the new Captain Pindar, which I kind of got. Yeah. But since these may never happen, I'll just have to be happy rereading this each year which I did reread it each year, except for this year, the year that it was a book club read. Recommended to anyone who loves space opera and anyone interested in reading a story um, they won't see coming, suitable for all readable readers, but meant for adults. So yeah, this story really got to me. Um, I really liked it. And I'm not gonna pretend like the story itself is perfect in every way, but it just all comes together. The, this ultimate sacrifice that I talk about, it, it's, a, it's very kind of controversial and I'm not gonna like tell you because if you want to, you can read it for yourself, but it's just in the, the car Grandy things, they are amazing. And I'm very sad about what happens um, to, to one of them um, because it, it's basically, I can't get into it. Anyway, just know that um, even though I love this book, I don't want to make it seem like there aren't some necessarily problematic things in it, but that's part of the story. You know, sometimes there are problematic things, which that whole goes into my whole diatribe about being a leader and all that jazz. So those, those, those are the book reviews for the month of October, plus a bonus. Um, 
And so, yeah, what did you read in October? Tell me, I want to know. Um, did you do anything for Halloween? Do you celebrate? Um, I never really grew up celebrating Halloween a whole lot, but I love carving pumpkins. Who wouldn't um, like dressing up, even though I didn't dress up? I didn't dress up my doggie. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, maybe you saw some pictures of my doggie. I have two different Instagrams, so you might have to follow her on Instagram now that I'm thinking about it. I'm rambling now. Anyway, so uh, yeah, tell me what you guys read. Make recommendations. I'm all for it. So stay safe out there. Until next time. Bye.